What is up, my little pretties? It's your mistress, the Queen of Lions here, and welcome back to another episode of Shadows and Pretties. Now, today in this episode of Shadows and Pretties is episode 82, and today we are doing a, um, I guess you could say a TV movie. Like, I've been kind of wanting to do, like, a TV movie for, like, I guess a little while now. And I think I kind of did one. I could be wrong, though. I don't remember because it's been, like, a couple of years. And today we are going to do a movie called Totally Spies. Now, this is the Totally Spies um, movie that came out in, um, in 2009. Yes. The movie was actually made in 2009. I was really, really surprised because... When I first saw this, I was quite surprised because, you know, for a movie who is like, I don't know, almost 12 years old for what it is, it is a, um, you could definitely say it's a, um, spy animated action film. Now, I am going to sit here and say this, that if you remember the show Totally Spies, you probably remember, you know... I guess you probably remember, you know, this show sometime when you were, maybe when you were younger, like maybe if you were a kid in the early 2000s, um, like if you were a kid in the early mid 2000s, you probably most likely have came across the show on TV. I know I did. It is a pretty good movie for what this one is. So to be completely honest, um, this movie was, um... Yeah, was made in 2009, and it was released in France on July 22nd, 2009, by Mars Distribution, but it also received mixed reviews and from critics, which I am going to sit there and, you know, basically explain the plot of the movie in case if you guys are, you know, wondering. So, basically, I'm going to be explaining, you know, the plot of the movie in case if you guys are wondering. Now, to be 100% and completely honest, I am going to, um, yeah, to be honest, I'm just going to sit there and, you know, explain what the movie is about. And yeah, that's based on the TV show Totally Spies, if you guys remember. So, anyways, I think we should jump right into this. So, this film begins with Sam Clover and Alex, our main characters, starting their new lives at Beverly Hills, which is located in California, as each of them was about to cross the paths outside to the sushi restaurant, nearby Whoop Ancients, which we also know as Jerry, their boss, purposely caused a giant sushi roll above the entrance to break off and chase after them. While setting some nearby animals free in the process, the giant sushi roll, with all three girls log rolling on what seemed to be on top of it, chases a piglet down the street. The girls are able to avoid it and save lives of the life of a piglet, which Alex later adopts the piglet and names him Oinky. Now, just, and they destroy the sushi roll before it causes any more damage. So Sam, Clover, and Alex, after that, they introduce themselves and they start their friendship when they see each other all over again at their new school, at their current principal, Miss Scritch, and their rivals, Mandy, Dominique, and Caitlin. Yes, Mandy is the, um, I could definitely say she's like one of the mean popular girls in, um, the whole movie. And she's like this in the series as well. If you um, watch Totally Spies the movie. You probably know who I'm talking about. And um, Clover offers her new friends a change of clothes. But Mandy sprays them with a chime machine. But after they find themselves sucked in through a locker. Into one of the offices of Whoop. They meet Jerry. And a fellow Whoop agent named Tad. That Jerry reveals that Whoop has been observing all three of them. Secretly since childhood and showing some videos of each girl and picking them as a prime recruits as the organization. The girls are quick to reject the invitation and refuse to join, but later they are forced into train after some traumatic experiences that seemingly related to Whoop. As they free go free on, you know, training within 48 hours to complete it. After their train, they're thrown into their first mission when they found their famous celebrities, including a rock star, Rob Herifob and animal psychologist Peppy Wolfman that have been mysteriously abducted. So this shows that how the girls obtain their definitely colored uniforms thanks to the design suggested by Clover when they go by Wolfman's buildings where Alex has Oinky go for the hog wild mommy as a distraction as Oinky 
deliberately runs around the lobby with the other animals, and the receptionist is in pursuit. But that's how they find out that later they went through a makeover machine called Fabluzer, which discovered thanks to the security footage of Wolfman's office. They later see that everyone at school had gone through the Fabluzer, having same, the same look the same day, Oinky ends up going through the Fabizor, getting the same makeover as well. As after being blasted by one of Fabu's minions, the jet fire, well, jet, well, finds out. But, of course, they realize that, you know, Fabuzar became hypnotized with a special chip in their cheekbones prior to the makeover. So, of course, when Alex spots her pig in the crowd, she grabs onto him with Sam and Clover grabbing onto Alex as they were about to be abducted into a strange space station. So while out in space after being abducted, they disguise themselves as one of them by adding makeup. And then they meet the mastermind of behind of it, Fabu, who runs away model Dull, who quickly lost fame within a five minutes of the runaway, was ashamed for not being part of the crowd during his childhood. The spies accidentally expose themselves and they are captured by the villain, the strongest henchman, and he relates to the entire plan to abduct everyone who went through the Fabezor, and place them inside a special space station where he calls Fabutopia to live out their new lives in posh surroundings, which uses a missile to destroy Earth. But before using his Fabizor to reverse and give the girls each horrible makeovers, Sam gets green skin and and Clover for grows an Yui brow and Alex gets, you know, massive pimples. Then he sets them off to be blasted back to Earth with rockets. But just as he leaves, things unfortunately get more difficult when Tad meets the girls again, but they are still in prison and says that he will let them fail the mission to stop Fabu himself, taking all the credit to regain his favorite ancient, status with Jerry. But after the fight with Fabu, the Tad is still trapped in the missile to bound to Earth and the girls manage to escape, and after fixing Fabu's or his damage to themselves, they go after Fabu. And then after they were unable to stop the missile from taking off the hitch ride as they're rocking it towards Earth, Tad's still attached to it. They are able to turn the missile around to destroy the station. Surprisingly, the girls, they, they, since they had no idea how to stop it earlier, Alex whacks the control panel from the Whoop manual, and then they are picked up by a surprise appearance from Jerry, one of Whoop's ships, who uh, rescue and kidnap people from the aboard station. Freeing from the hypnotic trance of destroying Fabu's signal and beacon and staff, and evacuate safety, including Oinky, who Alex thought he was never going to make it out in time, only to see him run fast to her. So finally reunited with Alex before the missile explodes and destroys the station in a firework finale, then they chase after Fabu's ship and they finally destroy it, catch Fabu and the Sphinx in what seems to be an escape pod. But after the mission, the girls admitted that the mission was difficult at first, but also had made them friends, so they accepted their position as spies, as Alex was invited to a session with Wolfman, and Clover is offered a date with Rob on the phone, but before that, they return to school to face punishment from the principal for the damage they had caused while trying to avoid her earlier on the movie. Thanks to Sam using the laser lipstick as a cut a hole to escape from the wall earlier, but, unfor but fortunately, it, but it seems to, that Whoop, they have a new principal who goes unnamed, who is similarly does not know about the girl's punishment, but gives Sam a higher praise. While well, meanwhile, we see that Miss Scritch has been transferred to another school in Antarctica in an igloo. And yeah, Antarctica is like the Earth's self-morphous continent that contains geographic South Pole, which is, you probably know what that is. If you if you took in, um, I guess you could say, um... If you could, if you, you like, if you took geography class, you probably get what I mean. Now, as punishment for Beverly Hills School District for, well, mistreating some students, Fabu and his henchmen and Tad are later imprisoned and set for punishment by Whoop. And everyone else who is rescued from, a bur from aboard Fabu's, well, space station have uh, their minds erased, including Mandy. But just goes to the girls celebrate, even when Mandy, for the last time, Courtesy of one of Whoop's gadgets, they are notified about another mission. So the girls quickly bring up their personal appointments, but as soon as they send themselves helps running from a Whoop jet as it appears to suck them on board, but the girls are ready for their next mission. As they change into their, as they change into their spy uniforms and exclaim their friendship, ending the movie. 
That's actually a really great movie. I really remembered watching this when it was on Cartoon Network TV and I fell in love with the movie. It was really good, really well made. It actually fits well with the whole concept itself for what it is. Surprisingly, I'm going to say that the voice acting was flat out amazing. It was well done. I really do think it was really nice for what it is. But of course, it was pretty interesting for what it is. Now, surprisingly, I really do find this movie to be rather enjoyable for what it is. It actually had good characters, and the villain seemed to be pretty interesting. It had a good development with the whole, you know, this certain concept for it, what it is. Now, however, though, I definitely have to say the film aired on Disney Channel in Asia in February of 2010. A week after that, it premiered of the season finale adaptation of its spinoff called The Amazing Spies, which... I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to talk about that one too much because, well, that's not the video for it. But prior to the film version, Disney Channel Asia has made two compilations of the movie of the TV series. The first one of the covers of the season free finale, Evil Promotion March Much Part 1 to Free. The second one covers the fourth finale, Totally Busted. And then the film premiered as a British children's channel pop in March of 2016, and the film was shown to the U.S. and Cartoon Network on April 25th, 2010 at 7 p.m. However, though, there are, you know, a lot of things regarding to that. So, of course, the film has been released in France and on July 22nd, 2009, in around 272 feeders, and then it was released on DVD by Fox Panfe Europa in October of 2000. In nine, the movie appeared in the Netherlands, staying there for seven weeks, and then it was uh, released on DVD format over there on March 10th of 2010. Now, the uh, the DVD release with the of the movie with its original language French, it was released in France through February free through the Fox Pafé Europa, and it topped the charts in French Amazon of it its best release. Of course, Novenda Films, a New Zealand disruption company, has recently confirmed the release date of Totally Spies the movie on DVD will be released, has never yet, not yet to be announced, but overseas it also costs around, around $25. Marathon has currently no plans to release in Latin America, but however, in 2010, in March 30th, Cartoon Network obtained the rights to release Totally Spies the movie in America, including the spin-off, The Amazing Spies. Also, there is a soundtrack to the movie as well that was released in France, but it was never released in North America, which this included the walk like the Egypt, like an Egyptian from the Bangles, pretty good um, pop um, band for during the 80s, and during one of the scenes of the film, an opening and ending credits was Gold Gun Girls by Canadian rock band Metric. So... With that being said, the film grossed out about, like, almost, like, around close to $600,000 on the first weekend and ranked to be number 9 at the French box office, which it was grossed out pretty much a lot in the feeder. It grossed out for the second and third and fourth weekends, and the film grossed about $1.3 million internationally, which is pretty amazing, to be completely honest. Now... I definitely have to say I like Totally Spies. I know there's like some video games based on it, which I am not going to talk about the video games too much because, well, I've never played it. But I definitely have to say I really do find, you know, Totally Spies to be a pretty good show for what it is. Now, the movie, on the other hand, I really have to say if you've seen this on Cartoon Network, you're very lucky because I saw this on Cartoon Network when I was a kid. I probably just don't remember how old I was. So I watched the movie for the second time on YouTube. And yes, the English version of this movie is on um, YouTube if you guys want to know. It's on YouTube if you guys want to, you know, check out the movie. It's pretty good for what it is. Although the movie, I could definitely say I watched this show a lot when I was a kid. It's still pretty good for what it is. Even though there were some flaws in the movie, it still is pretty good. And I'm sure if you're a fan of, you know, Cartoon Network or Totally Spies in general... Most likely you will probably like this movie. Now I will talk about the TV series in the future. I'm not sure when I will have time to do that, but I am considering on doing that. So if you want to comment down and let me know when you want me to do the 
well, TV shows for future episodes of Shadows and Pretties, feel free to let me know because I really do enjoy the movie as it has pretty good detail for what it is. It's amazing. It's funny. The animation is, oh my goodness, flat out amazing. Really well done. The characters are pretty good along with the good voice acting. It's just really, really, really well done for what it is. I really do think that if you're a fan of Cartoon Network or Totally Spies or, you know, anything in general, this is definitely the movie with you. It's definitely the movie you should really check out. It's it's awesome. You will not be disappointed when you um, see this as it's a very good movie for what it is. It had a pretty good concept for what it is. It had good, you know, it had some jokes and that. And, you know, to be completely honest, if you happen to, you know, come across this movie, I highly recommend you check this movie out. You will not be disappointed once you see this. So, I guess I watched this movie, I guess, the other day because I kind of remembered, you know, watching this as a kid before I reviewed this one, which I am now. And I really, really like this one. It actually had a good concept. It was flat out amazing. And I highly recommend you check out this movie. Now, it is on YouTube. If you guys want to check it out, feel free to search it up. And when you guys watch it, you're not going to be disappointed. So, I guess with that being the case and that being said, I'm going to wrap up this episode of Shadows and Pretties. So, as always, it, it, what do you guys think about the movie Totally Spies? Did you like it? Did you not? And also, what we have done person to help make this movie a lot better? Feel free to let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're happy to be brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. And don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload. So that way, you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm... No, wait a second. Ugh. My god, I gotta keep stop saying outro when it comes to... Ugh. When it comes to, well, you could definitely say, um, because this is not like a creepypasta damn well anyways forget about the outro part i said that but as always um i'll see you all in the next video peace out